Hello and welcome to study with Sudhir. Let's now talk about the last examination for students of class 10 ICSC board, that's biology. With me is Dr. Neeta Bish, the head of department of biology at the Hyderabad Public School in Begumpet in Hyderabad. Thank you very much, ma'am, for speaking to us. Biology is one subject, unlike some other subjects for class 10 students, where they just can't pick and choose. They can't say, okay, let's leave out these chapters, right? Yeah, uh, it's not a good idea to be selective if you are aiming to score uh, high marks uh, because it's a very uh, objective paper. And uh, part one itself covers 40 bits. So either way, part one or part two, entire, uh, all chapters are covered. So there's no choice. And, and also, uh, the syllabus is not supplemented with any blueprint where the division of 80 marks is being given. So it just depends on the uh, volume of the chapter and the, its coverage. So a student has no choice to leave anything here. Everything has, every chapter or topic has to be revised. Before we get into the preparation of the uh, syllabus, during the examination, is it a good idea to go in for the section B first or do you suggest that they should start from part B? Uh, uh, it, is, uh, it depends on the choice, uh, but I suggest student must attempt part one first because uh, if you see the look, uh, I mean, see the uh, reading time, 15 uh, minutes, 10 minutes must be devoted to read and understand part one. And after that, and part one is, um, it's a compulsory section. So, and by virtue of evaluation, uh, it's one or zero. So uh, any error here is a student is, uh, you know, uh, penalized very heavily. So very careful study of reading of question and answering should be done for part one. So I advise part one, then followed by part two where you have a choice to. Uh, you just mentioned that students are penalized very heavily. Tell me yeah. with the ex help of some examples, how are students penalized heavily? What mistakes should they avoid in order to get penalized heavily? Yeah. Uh, first is their objective questions, and then every question is uh, it comes with a set of instructions. So instructions should be followed or must be followed as given. If statement asks for true or false, student must write T R U E true or F A L S E. A false statement to be corrected, rewritten. False statement must be written correctly again. Uh, usually, uh, the common error is student write this statement as false and then only correct the word, last word or first word, where you know examiner fails to understand which word uh, you know student has put up as a false uh, word. So a complete statement has to be mentioned, instruction should be followed correctly. Now for example a question like odd, odd one out. So a, an odd term has to be picked up followed by you know, category for rest of the term. Now, the common error is student pick up the correct odd term and write the category of the same odd term there. So, odd term is correct, but reason or category is wrong. So, uh, you know, uh, by virtue of, again, the rule here, it's one or zero. So, student uh, do not get any mark for the uh, partially correct answer here. So, this is, uh, you know, a heavy penalty on the student uh, for not being careful. What are the problem areas as far as this part one is concerned? Part one, there are five uh, problem questions, and uh, starting with you know location. Now, location of a or of any organ or structure should be very specific, not general. A uh, student must give two reference points at least. For example, uh, you know, in eye there is a part called. Um, iris and there is a part called ciliary muscle. Both are part of the choroid layer. Now if question is write the specific location of uh, iris and child rights um, choroid and then uh, iris uh, is choroid and ciliary muscle is also choroid. So a uh, specific location is uh, uh, choroid layer extension or it extend in front covers lens partly or eye lens partly, that is the iris. And uh, ciliary muscle is again extension of choroid attached to suspensory ligament. So uh, answer may have a you know, general location same, but we have to write a specific location. So 
in other way, we can say there, are, there should be two reference point. Choroid is one reference point, and where, whether it is extending or attached to some other part is a second reference point. So, so just to kind of take off from here, I mean, while preparing, while they are revising and studying the syllabus in the days uh, they have before the examination, what should the students really be kind of very particular about in order not to make these kind of mistakes? Uh, I suggest, you know, a uh, student must read textbook much before the exam. During exam or during while preparing for exam, it should be the study material prepared during regular classes where the location, functions, definitions are condensed, uh, you know, uh, to and include and also include um, operative terms or key term. So it gives a precise answer in the limited words. So that material student should be ready with. And a student has to revise only that. Okay. The other thing is when students are asked to explain specific biological terms, do students from your experience as an evaluator go wrong when they are doing this kind of description? Uh, specific uh, terms or the explanation part actually calls for a uh, definition. Now definition should be very precise and limited word. Uh, you are allowed to write in your own uh, words or colloquial words, uh, but what we suggest is not to explain it because when you start explaining in your own word, uh, you go beyond the word limit. And sometimes examiner find it very difficult to match the, this answer with the answer given in the key. Uh, so there is, you know, scope of student losing marks. So essentially the keywords have to be used, which essentially would also mean that they kind of stick to the textbook language. Would that be a right way to interpret uh, that? Keywords are actually self-explanatory. So in limited word, and any answer can be explained. For example, uh, you know, when we say endosmosis or exosmosis, endosmosis is, you know, the flow of water or movement of water molecule from external solution into the cell. Now, if st child writes, you know, the inward movement of water uh, equivalent to endosmosis, uh, it is wrong because it says into the cell. So if you miss the word, so it is easy to learn terms like endosmosis or exosmosis to and replace it. So where answers is, answer is precise with the keyword or operative term. As I said, child is not penalized for not using that, but equivalent answers should be correct and uh, should be there for the examiner to evaluate. The other uh, aspect is about the logical sequence. Yeah, you, you, uh, what would you advise the students? Logical sequence is something which, uh, you know, one cannot pick it up in one or two days. Yes. Uh, students have to have very cl uh, you know, clear concept of the uh, physiological phenomenon or the process. So it is always advised, you know, that student prepare a complete mental map of, let's say, photosynthesis, the process, what are the factors affecting it, what is a chemical, uh, you know, overall reaction and how, uh, how significant it is, mental map, and then uh, the whole process can be revised with the help of that. So uh, any question in a logical sequence, any term, ask for a complete process explanation. So without knowing the concept, it cannot be attempted. Now let's come to part two. During those 15 minutes, obviously, students will also look at which of the questions they should choose. Is there specific strategy that they should kind of adopt in choosing which questions they should choose? Because obviously the questions could be asked from any chapter. Any chapter. Uh, one advantage students have in part two is there is a choice. Out of six questions, they have to select four best questions. What I suggest is uh, student must look for sub, uh, you know, questions where sub-question consists of differences because differences are guided. Uh, and... Uh, Experiment-based question where uh, students are required to write the observation and supporting the observation with a valid reason and other question, diagram-based question because diagram-based question calls for only the clarity of diagram and the important parts label. Uh, avoid attempting questions or sub-questions where there is uh, ex re give reason or scientific reason is asked for because unless child is a very clear concept or understanding of any phenomenon, um, the, uh, give reason question should be avoided because um, if you make a mistake here, you do not get for a, again a partly correct answer also. Or uh, at time, the answer may be part of answer may be dependent on the other part, other half. So again, there is a, you know child loses marks by virtue of your the evaluation system we follow. Basically, the students have to be very careful on which of the six questions they choose 
for the four that they would. Wise choice has to be made when you are picking up, and there is a scope of you know um, scoring here more than a part one. Part one, any mistake, uh, we uh, generally you know out of 40, 38 is expected. Uh, brightest of you know or a very intelligent child also makes you know one or two marks but more than that if a child make mistake it cannot be compensated in part two right. uh, another thing uh, what, what should the students do in terms of preparation before the examination uh, preparation before the examination is uh, give a good reading to the book followed by the textbook textbook after that followed by uh, practicing uh, or learning their own study material now their own study material is condensed answer in the form of function location definition experiment based question which they have prepared in the course of study or during their class right, right. Okay. thank you very much ma'am for all these suggestions and tips